What is going on, YouTube world? We are KRT Life. KRT Life with the Y. Like, subscribe, comment, and all those beautiful, great things. We just finished a five hour drive, and we're actually still driving in a 2012 Jeep Wrangler. And oh my God, this was unexpected, but we feel like we would tell y'all about our experience coming up right now. This thing is shaking like crazy. I think it's going to be trash. <laughs> kiddos we are winding down five hours in this jeep wrangler this was not planned so you know we don't know how this vlog is gonna go but we're no gonna notes. go no See notes guys? so we're just gonna talk straight up through what we've experienced right off the past. top of the dome yeah. and i'll let sister cat take the lead on this vlog while i focus on not crashing into anybody all right so let's see um i have never been in the jeep nor i driven the jeep before i only heard the stories i've never really Jeeps never really uh, was one of my options that I would want to have as you know my personal car. Uh, my first experience of getting in a Jeep when we were just driving around town was very negative because I felt like we were riding on the washboard. It literally was doing this, like a waves. And I was like, oh my God, we have to do this for five hours? That's gonna be rough. But after riding around for five hours the road was very smooth it's not hilly just a straight up shot so our driving experience wasn't actually as bad as i thought it was going to be it was smooth enough <laughs> it is very noisy uh i have a very big problem with visibility in this car because it's more like an fj where you know windshield is very narrow and then the way my position sitting position is I can't we're in the base model so I can't adjust my seat to sit higher Reza could so for me I'm sitting so deep and then the front dashboard is literally like almost like probably my chest level so I don't like that it's um, like you're in a kid seat <laughs> yes but it's just very I you know like when I drive I like to be able to see properly because you know a lot of stuff going on on the road this car can has no power. No power. But it could keep up with that Bentley that we're following. Yes. So on this whole five-hour trip, we've been uh, keep trying to keep up with our friend who's driving a W12 Bentley Continental right now. And we actually, I mean, he That's obviously could decent. leave us, but we did not get left. Like, we still kind of held our own, even yeah. though I had to mash the accelerator through the floor to keep up with him on the highway. We managed to keep up. And um, so my thoughts on this vehicle, let me, I'll give y'all a quick backstory. The first like dream car that I ever wanted in life was a uh, Jeep Wrangler YJ. And I wanted that car so bad. This was back before they were making all the four doors and like the, the truck bed ones and all this kind of stuff. You pretty much could only get a two door Jeep. And I wanted it so bad. And when I finally got one, it was such a horrible experience. I have not owned a Jeep since, or pretty, or really driven a Jeep for an uh, and it's a bad accident. Why are they or, on the, uh, going the opposite direction? Or driven a Jeep for an extended period since then. So this is kind of like a weird little treat right here. So initially I thought it was gonna be really, really bad, just like Sister Cat was saying, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I mean, on bad roads, it rides really bad. Like yes. the- Driving around town is not an option in this thing. It yeah. is very shaky and wobbly and it's not comfortable at all. But in its stock form on smooth roads on the highway, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to yeah. be. And we are in a uh, hard, hard top, top variant versus the one that I had was a soft top. So it's a lot quieter, even though it's still really, really loud compared to the uh, ghost that we were riding in yeah, a few well. days ago, or the last two, three days. So there is that. So now we're in a Jeep. So there's big difference in the car. So maybe that might give us a little bit of bias. Just slightly, slightly. I don't know. But overall, it was not as bad of an experience as I thought it was going to be. Uh, this one is, once again, it's the base model, so there's no power windows, no power locks, seats don't move, doesn't do any of that kind of stuff. So it is very Spartan-esque, and you kind of got to remind yourself, like, ah, oh, damn, I got to unlock this door. I got to roll down this window. If you want to adjust your mirrors, you have to do that manually. You got to do it manually. Yeah, everything in this thing is manual, but 
it's not that bad. Now, I do hate the sound system. The sound system is literally terrible, like to the point where I thought when I connected my phone to the uh, sound system, I was like, man, this sounds really, really bad. Maybe the <laughs> settings are wrong, but all the settings were flat and yeah. it was still horrid. So the sound system gets a massive uh, zero. The design, I hate this one. It's a two-door model. I really, really like the four-door model these days. And these, this one, especially like the base two-door, just does not look like a man's car. I know that probably sounds weird, but no, it but doesn't. I can totally see what you're saying. Um, but I gotta say the seats, right? So originally, when I sit down, I thought it was they were very hard, and they mm -hmm. are hard. But the way they shaped five hour ride was, was actually not bad. Like this seat supports my back properly, so I haven't gotten any back ache or feeling nope. like oh god, I get out of the ho house, <laughs> get out, get out of the car. So even though they hard, they shaped pretty decently to give you a comfortable experience. I would take that a step further and I would say that the front seats in this base model Jeep are more comfortable than the front seats in the Ghost. Yeah. My rear end was hurting something serious in the Ghost and the Ghost has a uh, massage function in it. I guess we can probably overlay it right here. But the massage function feels like you're on a medicine ball or something. So it's not the most comfortable massage function ever. Whereas this base model, no need for a massage function, is actually pretty darn comfortable. I haven't experienced massage function in Ghost because I was riding in the back in comfort and I was <laughs> <laughs> has have a driver, you know, chauffeur me around. So, but the back seats in Ghost are definitely yeah. top notch. So and now space. Now obviously the Ghost has all the space. This right here has a lot less space, but it was enough for both of our bags. And we were for most yeah, of our trips. Enough. Uh, I don't know if you can see our, uh, you can't see our bags, but our bags are behind the back seat and there's plenty of space for our bags and the jackets and the little knickknacks that we carry with us mm -hmm. on this trip. So I feel like we could travel pretty much anywhere effectively in, in this. In this car, yes. Uh -huh. And yeah, so that's the space. Um, the ride quality is terrible. We talked about the uh, lack of power from the engine. We talked about how comfortable the seats are. And we talked about how surprised we actually were overall with how decent of a ride it was going to be on the highway. Yes. When our friend first told me, that he needed us to I do a favor. Terrified. Oh my God. So when we sit down in the car and I told you like I've never been in one before. And as soon as we started driving, we were doing this the whole time around town. I'm like, oh God, this is, we're going to have this for five hours. I might need to get some uh, seasickness pills because I don't know if I could make it. And I'm actually in a much better shape than I thought I was going to be. Yeah. It wasn't as bad as we thought. Like, and honestly, I am, I, I'm so impressed to the point where I will say this one little fact, and this is something we discussed on the highway. If I had a choice between a brand new Range Rover and this base model Jeep, top of the line Range Rover versus base model Jeep, I would take a base model Jeep over a Range Rover. But let me make that a little, you know. Clearer? Yeah, clear. The reason why we would put the Jeep, because we are not up with, or not aligned with the Range Rover issues and reliability problems. Mm -hmm. At least with a Jeep, you don't have that factor. But the comfort in a Range Rover, obviously, in the ride is pretty small. And you can customize the hell out of this. There's so much you can do to Jeeps. That's one thing that, yeah. that's another thing I do. I'm not a Jeep person, full disclosure. I was gonna say. Like, you know, Jeeps, 911s, all that kind of stuff, you either gotta like it or love it. I love the 911, I hate Jeeps. But one thing that I do like about Jeeps is the amount of customization that is available to the uh, buyer. You have a lot of options, for sure. But the caveat to that, hey, 997, the caveat to that is you have to do a lot of customizations to a Jeep to make it look halfway decent. So to me, that's a massive drawback, but I would still take a Jeep over a Range Rover. Yes, I would too, but definitely would not be my first, second, third, fifth, or tenth option. <laughs> but... <laughs> If I would have to drive this, if I was put in that situation, I would have been okay. Yeah. Looks like we might be at, nearing our destination, so we're gonna finish this like uh, experience vlog. Impromptu. Impromptu. We are KRT Life, KRT Life with the Y. Like, subscribe, comment, all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is another one of these experience vlogs that we're experimenting with. We just with. happen to have access yeah. to a Jeep and have a long ride in it, so there you go. This was what we thought. All right, we'll see y'all in the next vlog. We're probably gonna be camping or fixing something. So we'll see y'all then. Well, knowing the guy that we're with, we're probably gonna be fixing something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, peace.